Hi, I'm Adam Adams. You may know me as a great explorer, the boy who would go on to find the Pupiltine River, but I wasn't always that way. No way. First, I had to deal with one crazy, crazy day at school. Well, actually, it was a crazy, crazy day at recess. You see, I just sat through Mrs. Kane's teaching, which, if that doesn't put you to sleep, then... Oh man, I wish she'd read me a bedtime story. Then I know I could go to sleep on time. And so, the soon-to-be Americans looked to if by C, and one if by land. <laughs> and they listened for Paul Rearend to say, the spinach is coming, the spinach is coming. They were waiting for him to come down the path yelling, the spinach is coming, hide your children, the spinach is coming. At least that's all I heard of her lesson. I don't try not to pay attention, but when she started talking about Paul's rear end and spinach, that's in history stopped making sense. Besides, it's not like I need to know American history. I live in Ohio, that's not America, that's Ohio, totally different place. Oh, that's the recess bell. Yes. My name is Kate Everett, and I'm the Wendy Darling of this adventure. I'm smart, rational, and I can get us out of any trouble. I'm the one who made sure that Adam didn't get snapped up by the Tetraborines. I'm the one who made sure that the Bengals didn't look at us wrong. And I'm the one who made sure that... You know what? You'll find out. Yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. I got to do a play real quick. What's that red dot flashing mean? Oh. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Well, I. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> I am the narrator. Somebody else auditioned, but they had ties to Russian spies, so here I am. <laughs> what can I say? Right. Well, I'll try and do my best. We have two characters, and I think they already introduced themselves to you. Adam Adams and Kate Everett. They're fifth graders at the local Owl Elementary here in Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. Yeah. Well, they're now out at recess and trying to decide what to play. Here they are now, as a matter of fact. Hey, Kate. Hey, Adam. What are we going to play today? I was thinking we could go on an adventure. You always want to go on an adventure. Yeah, but my adventures are amazing. I'll be the explorer and you'll be my pilot. How about we both be explorers? Okay, well, where do you want to explore? We've explored every inch of this playground, but we've never explored all of Pupiltine River and Jungle. I want to explore over there. But we're not allowed over there. Come on, you said you wanted to explore a jungle. What's a better jungle than actual trees? Uh, I don't know. Okay, here's the deal. If you explore with me, then I won't tell Coraline you're a chicken. I'm not a chicken, I'm an explorer. Come on, Kate. Adam runs past Kate to see the edge of the forest next to the playground. A glow can be seen from in the shrubbery. It emanates a bright blue light. Since when were you so fast? Said Kate as she caught up to Adam at the edge of the forest. She didn't notice him, staring directly at the light. You're always the slowest of Miss Kane's grade. That's why we called you Sally Snail. Chicken. Whoa, Kate, you gotta see this. Whatever you're trying to show me can't possibly be. Whoa, that's a bright light. Where do you think it's coming from? Starbucks? 
what? Starbucks? Well, I don't really know what Starbucks is, but it has star in the name, so it's probably really shiny. Starbucks isn't a bright light. It's, it's not a lamp store, Adam. It's a coffee store. Actually, it is a slice of heaven on earth. So what is it? We should go see. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Kate walks into the glowing object which resembles the size and shape of a mirror. Her body entirely disappears and is instead replaced with her scream. Ah! Kate? Kate! Adam! I'm coming to save you, Kate! Adam Adams jumps into the portal after Kate. Among the commotion, their teacher, Layla Kane, hears Kate's scream. She rushes over to the edge of the woods to see if anyone has been injured. Kids! Oh, having fun again. And having fun where they're not supposed to be? Why? If I could erase all fun from existence and instead replace it with condos and golf and taxes, why I would. Layla Kane notices the portal and steps over to it. What's this? Mrs. Kane reaches out a single hand to touch the shimmering blue. She is sucked into the portal and thrown through time and space. Due to her being larger than the children, she lands in a different place than them. Adam is now alone in the middle of a clearing located in the center of a jungle. The surrounding woods are fantastical, resembling that of Alice in Wonderland, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, or Seuss. Bright, eccentric colors line the landscape and trees. A river can be heard in the distance, cutting straight through the jungle. Adam looks around and begins to panic, fearing he lost his friend. I was too late. She's gone. Dead, like a daddy long legs, or that beetle Mr. Martin stepped on during theater practice when he wasn't looking. Oh, Mr. Lennon, how you'll be remembered and cherished for always. Now Kate is among the dead beetles. I'm so sorry, I couldn't save you. Whoa, Adam, look around. Wait, are you okay? Kate, you're alive. How? <laughs> did, did you just think I was... Dead? Nope. Hey, look, a purple river with a dock on it. I wonder what that's about. Seems so we'll get our adventure at last, Adam. Two people enter, a man and a woman. They are arguing about something, but the children cannot make out exactly what they are arguing about. The woman stomps in the mud and crosses her arms. The man turns his head away in a solemn manner and notices the two children. Oh, look, there's people here, Evelyn. You said that there wouldn't be people here. Oh, Edit, you'll be fine. Just look around. It's the Poopletine River. There's nothing quite like it. And I'm sure the people are just as unique. Aren't you, weary adventurers? Huh? I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Ah, a smart one. Well, I agree. I shouldn't talk to strangers either. They can be a bit strange, what with their stranger habits than ours, eh, Edit? Why ask me? I am the esteemed Evelyn Baker, mystery maker and extraordinary extraordinaire. My friend here is Edit Reed, and he is a pilot. We've both just graduated from university. We have degrees in exploration, though some things just can't be taught. It's my first time. What is a pilot doing on the ground? Why, why ask me? I'm, I'm just along for the ride. What is an extraordinary extraordinaire? What isn't an extraordinary extraordinaire? Another man enters from the dock. His smile stretching from ear to ear. His broad strides make quick work of the distance between him and the group. Judging by his looks, he's probably British. How can you tell the difference between a British man and an American? Well, uh, continue on with the story. 
Hello, Remington Giles at your service. I will be your chariot chaperone and egregious explorer today as we stop down the Pupiltine River. Any questions? A chariot? Like a horse-drawn chariot? How did we get here? Why are we here? Can I go home? Can we get started? These are all marvelous questions. If there are no more, we can get started. I should go prepare the chariot for a ride on the Pupiltine River. I'm so excited to finally see the great purple river. I've dreamed of this day. Perhaps I shall make some mysteries along the way? So, he's not going to answer our questions? Well, why would he? The, they're questions, not answers. You, you question a question, not answer a question. I don't understand. You will in due time, young lass. Are you prepared for the journey today? I don't know how to answer that question. So don't answer it. Instead, question it. I see. Are you ready for the journey? Of course. I have all the essentials. Food, water, food, water, food, water, food, water, a compass, food, another compass, water, a third compass, cheese, a goat, a compass, water, food, more cheese, and a mystery-making notepad. How can that be helpful? How can it not? Yeah, it would appear that upon closer inspection, chariots sink in water. However, the positive is that we now have two wonderful seahorses to help pull a boat that I have crafted from a monlang tree. Unfortunately, our regular horses are no more. Excellent. Now, the puzzle. What's fat, not a bat, nor rat, and orange. Oh, joy. Here we go again. What exactly shall we see on the river, Remington? What exactly shall we see on the river, Dougal? Well, with trees like these, I don't imagine we'll see civilization. And with water like that, we shan't see any fish. And with this weather, I don't imagine we'll see many birds. Very astute, Miss Everett. But without birds, that must mean that there are worms. And with no fish in the river, that must mean there's something else living in the water. And with no civilization, that means there's anarchy. You're quite intelligent for your age, Master Adams. Yes, both of you are correct in all your assumptions, save for one. There's no... What is that? Angel, quick, to the seahorse drawn boat. <laughs> the entourage are now on a boat floating down the Pupiltine River. The Pupiltine is a river made of purple water with sugary substances inside. Kate Everett and Adam Adams look out into the jungle with bewilderment. Evelyn Baker joins them. Edit Reed sits and stares at his feet. Remington Giles stands with one leg on a seat. The river quietly hums as the seahorses pull the boats further downstream. The wind whispers through the trees. Amazing, isn't it? Is it? It truly is. But Remington, what is that awful smell? Why would you ask that? Adam, you can't ask them questions, remember? Question questions. That stench, Miss Kate, would be the stench of the Pupiltine River. You see, the people who named this place were quite wise. They realized the waters flowed purple due to the sugary substances released from the trees and the groundwater. But because sugar and water don't mix well, it created this, um, Poop-like smell. You're right. Pop and sugar go better together. Indeed. And thus the name was born. Poople. Remove the R, get the P-U, allude to the color, and you have a river. Fascinating. There was a person behind us, following us. Indeed. That person is truly evil. If evil could be embodied, then it would be her. 
You can tell she's coming when you hear one singular note. It, a note, nay, a pitch. It can make grown men cry and babies shake in their boots. Everything that comes with her is evil. It destroys our beautiful Pupatine jungle. All of the fun is sapped away. Luckily, so is the smell. What can we do to stop her? What can't we do? Oh, oh, it's, it's so hopeless, don't you think? We can't think like this, can we? Why wouldn't we? Why can we? This river, if there are glowing trees of yellow and, and polka-dotted trees of orange and, and great animals with furs of lime green and blue, then surely we must protect this place. It's our duty. Agreed. We must protect this place. Yeah, but Adam, there are more dangers that lurk in this jungle. Like what? Like... Like the ones we talked about before getting on the seahorse boat. There's plenty to see, but we have to be careful. You're right. We should... Something slams into the bottom of the boat with a massive thud. The party are knocked around. What was that? Why would you ask that? Something hit the bottom of the boat, Remington. Ah, indeed. That would be the gargantuous Wriggler, also known as the GW. That sounds scary. That sounds like a new adventure. The gargantuous Wriggler appears from beneath the sticky surfaces of the Poopletine River and knocks Edit Reed from the boat. Edit floats away downstream before disappearing in the distance. Edit! Gargantuous Wriggler, GW. Of course, giant worm. GW means giant worm. Since there are no birds and there are plenty of worms, and since no fish live in the water, then the worms do. Ah, remind me to congratulate you at a later date. Edit? Edit, can you hear me? Edit? Perhaps it is best if you go after him, Evelyn. But I'm a mystery maker. I can't help him. He's a pilot. You help him. True, I am an explorer and an egregious one at that, but perhaps you will solve your mystery if you do. What's fat, not a bat, nor a rat, and orange? Why ask me? Why not? Nobody should be getting off the boat right now. We all should be getting off the boat right now. There's a giant worm in the water. We need to get to land. Good thinking, Adam. Seahorses, away! The worm crashes and slams into the boat, attempting to stop the party from reaching the shore. However, the party makes it to shore and all step off the boat. Besides Evelyn Baker, who stands on the boat, puzzled and questioning to herself. This is a mystery wrapped in an enigma. What's fat, not a bat, nor rat, and orange? And as she says that, the giant worm grabs Evelyn from the boat and drags her into the river. Bubbles can be seen and awake as the worm travels downstream with its prey. Evelyn! Evelyn, no! Yes, that's unfortunate. Didn't expect the first five minutes of our trip to be so egregious. Alas, that happens sometimes. Shall we continue? We have to go back for her. We can't. She's probably been eaten. She's gone. But people don't die. They do, Adam. And sometimes they don't come back. Death is a permanent situation. It's not something that can be fixed. Uh, but it only dragged her away. It didn't eat her. She's gone. There's no hope. Let's just keep going. I, I don't believe it. I'm sorry, my boy. Sometimes things happen for the worse and people can't be saved. The best we can do is move on and try to fill the hole that was left in our lives by them. Have you ever lost anyone, Remington? Oh, yes, many times. It's part of the job. You're leading someone into dangerous woods. Sometimes you're bound to lose them. You'll turn a corner and look behind you and realize that they're not there. So you spend hours, sometimes days, searching for them, only until you realize they're lost. You're talking about actually losing someone. Like that time my mom forgot about me in Walmart. Why wouldn't I be?
The trio are now deep in the Poopleteen jungle, talking and discussing topics. Some are still mourning the loss of their new friends. Others are dreaming of treasures. There are lots of ruins in these woods. There are, each with buried treasures beyond which your mind can comprehend. With a lot of treasure in them? Then why would that be? Kate, do you know how hard it is to talk to these people without asking questions? Question their questions. They've only been responding to one or two questions with questions. Why wouldn't there be? Well, there would be. See? Remington, where are we going? Where aren't we going? Where can we go? Where can't we go? We can't go back to the river. At least not right now. That's right. Which means we'll continue doing what we're supposed to be doing. Exploring. I know these jungles like the back of my hand. I know exactly what we'll see here. Does that sound familiar to you? Should it? It should. Everyone hide. Uh, we found the one part of the jungle that's an open clearing. We can't hide anywhere, Remington. Well, this is a right bummer. Hello, Remington. How are you? Mm, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. That's Mrs. Kane. Our teacher. teacher. Hello, children. Did you think you could escape from me? Yes, that's why we came exploring, to escape the bores of school. Ha! Ah, you fool. You can't escape me. You hear it in your speech. School follows you everywhere. Soon you'll be just like me. In our speech? What does she mean? I don't understand either. Foolish children. With the rate you're going, you never will. Just come back with me to school, back to civilization before this gets ugly. I'm not sure anything can get uglier than you. <gasps> run, children! No, we're going to help you! No, we're going to run. Come on, Adam! Layla and Remington circle each other, preparing for an epic duel. Do you know what is in store for this jungle? For you. Do you? I do. I know the jungle will be torn down and replaced with libraries, books, schools. There will be no playgrounds for recess. There will be millions of retirement homes and there will be children dressed in gray. They will be shackled to their desks with a nose in a book and a pencil always in hand. If they disobey, then a ruler will be brought down on the backs of their heads. So you're teaching them to be obedient and not even question anything, not even questions? We can't have a population that can think for themselves. There can't be a people that actually questions authority. Why would you do this? How did you get all these people to support you? It was easy. They grew up with me in this society. Sure, we had fun as kids, but we learned the error of our ways. Men and women dressed in dull and boring colors enter from all over the jungle, surrounding Remington Giles. The egregious explorer has nowhere to go. <laughs> hey, hey, my name is Steven. <laughs> It's nice to meet you. Was wondering if I could interest you in a deluxe luxury condo seminar. Teaches you all about how to buy, invest, and own a deluxe luxury condo here in the great state of Northern Dakota. <laughs> hey, thanks for the offer, Stephen. Sounds great. How are you feeling about it, Remington? Want to join us on a deluxe luxury condo seminar? Get back and learn the ins and outs of business models that'll help you in your future. Why would I? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, mm, yes. See, I was expecting that answer. 
So, which is why my business associate here has prepared a triple encore deluxe presentation for you. Barbara! Remington, for just a few measly days, you can learn why you should invest in the great state of North Dakota and buy yourself a deluxe luxury condo for the small, minuscule price of seven million dollars. Oh, no! Remington Giles screams could be heard through the jungle, even on the seahorse-drawn chariot which was making its way back down the Pupiltine River. The final two members to the party, Adam Adams and Kate Everett, were upon this chariot. What do you think happened to him? What do you think didn't happen to him? I don't know. That sounds like a scary prospect. She was talking about us, how we speak, about questions. I don't understand what she meant. She's crazy, and she's our teacher. What is there to understand? What isn't there to understand? Do you think we'll see any of them again? <laughs> Do you think we will? Whoa, uh, it's okay there, Kate. I'm sure they're okay. Eddie is a pilot, and Evelyn is a mystery maker. And don't forget, Remington is an egregious explorer. <laughs> Do you know what egregious means? Do you? It means outstandingly bad, shockingly awful. Egregious isn't a good word, Adam. I didn't know that. A mystery maker doesn't solve puzzles. She makes them. That isn't a good trait to have, especially in a jungle full of mysteries. And Edit is a pilot who can't fly. We're doomed. No. No, we have one thing going for us. Make that too. And I'm a naturally fierce adventurer. And I've got remarkable wit. Adam, we can make it through and make it home. Yes, so do you have a plan? Why wouldn't I? Tell me, tell me! Well, it's actually kind of simple. I solved part of the riddle. Remington said to question questions, not answer them. And Mrs. Kane answered all of his questions with statements. So... The explorers are camped on the edge of the Pupiltine River for the evening. They are sitting around a fire and discussing the world surrounding them. Isn't it beautiful? Is it? We've got fire back in the real world, too. No, not that. The sky, the night, the stars. They're totally different constellations. They sure are. That's the little diaper, and that one's the big diaper. Looks a bit full. Say, Kate, when we get back home, what's the first thing you're going to do? Am I supposed to answer with a question? Let's just be normal for now. I think there's times to question things and times to answer things. You're right. If you were listening, even Remington broke the rules of questioning everything sometimes. Hmm. Adam, I think I'm going to write a book about our adventure here. Really? Yeah. And it's going to have drawings in it of the stars and the trees and the animals. That sounds really cool. It will be. And I'll... Something wrong? I don't have a computer. You don't have a computer? Like, not even a laptop? No. My family can't afford one. So, I do all my writing at school on those computers. Oh. Well, I've got a computer. Uh, you could come write on mine and we could write the story together. Really? Yeah, you and me. Just like it is now. I'd like that. Will you ever come back here? I don't know. This place is pretty crazy. And really fun. And really dangerous. And if Mrs. Kane succeeds, 
then there won't be a place to come back to. We have to stop her. For the sake of all the animals that live here. It's not just the jungle that's in trouble anymore. It's us, too. If we can't stop her, then she'll make us live in that new world she's creating. We won't ever get to explore again. No more playgrounds or recess. No more fun. That's no fun. No. And it won't matter then if I can write a book about this place. Because I'll be doing book reports instead. So that's why we're going to beat her. For children everywhere. So we don't have to ever grow up. There's nothing wrong with growing up. There's everything wrong with making others before they're ready. I'm getting kind of tired. Good night, best friend. Good night, best friend. A piercing screech is heard. It awakens both of the children. Kate springs to her feet and begins to gather the supplies. Adam quickly falls back asleep. Kate throws the camping supplies back in the raft and turns to Adam. Come on, Adam! I'm coming, I'm coming. We don't know what that screeching is. It could be anything. We've got to get in the raft and get away from it. <sighs> Let's go! Adam gets to his feet, grabs his sleeping bag, and joins Kate in the seahorse-drawn chariot. They push it out into the water and let the current take it. The screeching quiets, but still seems to be following steadily behind the duo. It sounds like it's coming this way. Yeah, but we're finally gaining some distance. I wonder what it is. I don't want to find out. The boat is nudged from underneath the water. Uh, you feel that? It came from under us. The boat is hit harder than before. The children stumble around, attempting to regain their balance. What is that? For a final time, the boat is slammed. The children fall to the floor and the gargantuous wriggler surfaces from the water below. It's a giant worm! Out of the fire, into the fire! Adam, watch out! Kate pushes Adam into the water as the wriggler hits the boat. The jolt knocks Kate almost entirely overboard. However, she luckily catches herself. She is holding onto the side of the raft for dear life as Adam holds onto the mane of a seahorse for his own life. The screeching begins to get louder again as Kate pulls herself up and into the boat. She rushes to the side and pulls Adam in by his shirt collar. Kate! Adam! Uh, we have to get out of the water. I'll try and direct the seahorses to the shore. The gargantuous wriggler rises up above the water, its mighty head rearing back directly over Kate. In the distance, Adam Adam spots Edit Reed flying a massive orange bird. The gargantuous wriggler leans down to consume Kate Everett. What's that? N not a bat, nor rat. And orange? Birds. And what do birds eat? Worms. Yeah! But before the wriggler eats Kate, it hears the caw of the bird and looks to the sky. It panics and attempts to get away. The bird drops Edit onto the chariot and chases after the wriggler. Edit, you're alive! Hello, everyone. How did you survive? Why wouldn't I? And you found birds? That's amazing! I know! I'm so proud. I can finally be a pilot. I thought I'd be useless on this adventure, but I got to fly, fight the gargantuous wriggler, and bring birds back to the football team. I even solved Evelyn's riddle. Thank you so much, Edit. Don't mention it. Say, uh, have you seen Evelyn? And uh, where's Remington? The bird flies back and lands on the boat. Its belly is larger than before. There not with us anymore. The worm got Evelyn, and Remington helped us escape Mrs. Kane. Oh, that's not good. That must mean that Orangelo just ate the worm, and if the worm ate Evelyn, then you spit out that worm right now. Don't give me, Don't give me that. 
You ain't my friend. So spit her back up. I just thought it would look cool. Come on. Please. Well, when you say it like that, Hold on there, GW. If you have my friend, then you spit her up right now. Aww. My apologies, dear sir, for any troubles I may have caused you. However, my deepest condolences for the loss of your friend. Unfortunately, I do not know where she has gone. She was a crafty lass and used her puzzle-making wit to outsmart me. She asked a riddle of which I could not solve. A very simple yet complex question that still chills me to this very day. We made a deal that if I, if I could not solve it, it would go free. And alas, she is free. Of course, I must now ask you this riddle as a common courtesy as one explorer to another. What have I got in my pockets? Of course, I am not wearing clothes and therefore it is difficult to determine what I have in my pockets as therefore I have no pockets. However, before the great orange bird apocalypse of 1912, my people did wear clothes. I am the only survivor and have since done away with my clothes to be able to easily explore the Pupultine River. This means that at one point I had pockets and these pockets had things in them. But I have since forgotten what things were in these pockets and thus I cannot solve the riddle. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you really the last of your people? Would I be here if I wasn't? I am, of course, thanks to these great orange birds. But now they've left the poople team, just like my ancestors and soon you too. I will be all that is left when Layla Kane finishes her work. It doesn't have to be that way. We can make a truce between you two and we can stop Mrs. Kane together. Alas, it is my fate. I will continue exploring the last portions of the poople team until the end times. I wish you two the best of luck, adventurers. I will remember this day and attack you no longer. You look so similar to her. I thought, I thought you were with her. Well, it's been a pleasure. Be free now, gargantuous wriggler. Thank you, friends. I will have a wonderful and joyful life. May yours be long and fun, full of many adventures. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Spit it back up now! Well, that's that. Mass extinction, the last of his people are now gone. But at least he had a wonderful life. I kind of feel bad that about bringing genocide on the giant worms, but at least we have birds back in the poopal team. I guess we just have normal sized worms from now on. He had so much to live for. Oh. We've got to find that one. She's still out there. Alone. The party stopped the chariot at the bank of the Pupultine and rested for a moment from their mighty battle. Suddenly, there's a stirring from the brush, and Evelyn Baker steps out. Oh, hi. Evelyn! Evelyn! I, I missed you so much. I, I can't believe you made it through all the peril. There, there was so much danger, but you're, you're so adventurous and clever. I, I, I knew you'd make it through. Oh, I, I love you! Oh. Um. Um. Well, it's, uh... Good to see you too, Edit! Where have you been? We thought you were dead, or lost in the jungle somewhere. Or dead, or deep in the jungle without food or shelter. Or dead, or fighting off giant yellow cave bats. Or dead. Ah, uh, alas, my good friend. It takes a lot more than death to kill me. When I am in its clutches, then I puzzle it to eternity and am set free! No. I found a mud sauna deep in the jungle and have been relaxing. But then I heard the caw of a poopy bird and had to stop by to see if my ears were deceiving me. Alas, they were not. 
and among the poopy birds were my companions, of whom I set out on this adventure with. Frankly, as much as I'd like to go back to taking a, a bath in the sauna, there is a much more pressing matter. Layla Kane. Her clutches have destroyed nearly half the jungle. There may be no sauna to go back to soon, and I can't have that. So, here is my plan. We have poopy birds now, and a seahorse-drawn chariot. If we put the two together, then we have a poopy seahorse-drawn chariot. And do you know what we can do with that? No. Neither do I. I just know they can MacGyver together. I like your plan. I really do. But I have another one. Actually, we can use your poopy chariot. Adam, this is perfect. I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to drop the chariot on her like Dorothy did with her house to the Wicked Witch of the East. And then the seahorses are going to wriggle around and she'll be dead. We'll never have to learn again and the poopal team will be safe. No, we'll use the poopy birds to fly the chariot and distract her. We'll use the birds and the seahorses together to double our speed on the river. We'll lead her back to the boat where we'll all be waiting. Then we'll lead her back upstream to where we entered the poopalteen and we'll throw her back through that rabbit hole so she'll never be able to affect this land again. So we're not going to smash her with the giant chariot? I like any plan that makes use of a master pilot. This is all great, but do you have any need for a puzzle maker? Of course we do. You have the important job of being bait. When we get to the portal, you'll be the one standing there, and you'll have to jump out of the way to make sure she goes in. Yes, I love being bait. This will be a wonderful new adventure. Whatever happened to Remington, Giles? He protected us from Mrs. Kane, told us to run, and we never saw him again. We fear the worst. He could be sitting in a teacher's lounge somewhere, watching reruns of David Attenborough documentaries. Or he could be sitting in a cubicle somewhere, watching and waiting for the stock market to rise. Huh. Which reminds me, I need to check my stocks on the post-it note company. Heard they're on the rise, at least 0.2% for this quarter. Oh, how simply delightful. Mrs. Kane. Ah, children, it is wonderful to see you again. Have I told you about the Anglo-Zanzibar War? It lasted between 38 and 45 minutes before. No, no, no more knowledge. We're here to adventure, not learn. Did you know that the early... <sighs> the Mayans would... Stop! If you're going to bore me to death, then at least wait till I'm 90. I'm still way too young to die. Kate, do you think she'll live till I'm 90? I'll give her 10 years at most. You children, always so rude and ill-mannered. This is why you need to be taught. Give up willingly and I won't have to call your parents. Call her parents? That's right, call your parents. Uh, you can't do that. You're burning and boring down an entire forest. You can't just call our parents. I can and I will. Uh, but we're explorers, adventurers. Uh, we don't listen to our parents. Five percent of the time. Maybe we should listen, Adam. Fine. Then maybe I should call your egregious exploring parent. Oh, uh, Remy! <laughs> No! Oh. Ah! Hello, Mr. Giles! Seen any good shows lately? <laughs> my, my soup has had the most exciting story arc. Brenda fell in love with Brad, but Brad loves Stephanie, and it turns out Stephanie only exists because Brad has a concussion. <laughs> oh, huh. Really? Well, 
I love watching sports. Yeah. Uh, say, how is your new condo? Oh, it's amazing. I'm so glad I sat through those multiple meetings that lasted 10 hours each to convince me to buy one. Say, would either of you two be interested in buying the condo? Me? Oh, would I ever? Condos are this generation's excitement. The boomers had the space race. The Everyone else had everything else. And us, we get condos. Wow, I just love condos. <laughs> There'll be an informational meeting directly following this play. It'll last 10 hours, and you can leave at any time, supposedly. Remington? Oh, hello, children. Can I interest you in a condo? All you'd have to do is attend a 10-hour seminar and give us your college funds. <laughs> Deal. What happened to you, Remington? You used to be cool, man. Oh, I'm still cool. I like to buy office supplies and, and run 5Ks. <laughs> Sometimes if I wake up at 5.50 instead of 6 a.m. and I even drink coffee to give me my morning boost. <laughs> Mrs. Kane, or should I say Layla, your perfume stinks like a rotted apple lying on the playground on a hot summer's day. Your hair looks like a nest of hornets that has been hit with a baseball bat. Your nails are the color of a freshly marked F on a child's paper, which has just crushed their dreams, along with any hopes of them getting into the sixth grade. Your eyes shine with the twinkle of all the kids that you forced to fail before you. And your smile can cause a child to die a horrid death right on the spot. In fact, that must be why you never smile. And so, Layla, those reasons, among many others, are why every kid hates you. Why, you little brat. Run! Layla was successfully distracted. She began chasing the party as they rushed to the poopy chariot, beginning their race down the river. Layla Kane and her fellow boring compatriots narrowly avoid trees as they hurriedly attempt to catch up to the children. Soon, the explorers notice something different about the landscape around them. It begins to change from a jungle of trees and plants to a jungle of cement and buildings. The party come to what they assume would have been the portal to the other world. Their world. It shines bright and blue. Layla and her lackeys surround the poopy chariot and start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to come down now. There's nowhere to go. Just surrender and everything will be all right. You'll be thrown in detention for a few months, and we'll call it even. Mm. Well, we'll also have to change your dress code because of your rude remarks about mine. But we won't change it to anything bad. How do you feel about wearing jorts, leg warmers, and tie-dye? Jorts? Tie-dye? No, no, not the 70s! Mm -hmm. Relax. <laughs> Remember the plan. We got her this far. Now we just need to throw her in the portal and everything will be fixed. But what if she catches us and makes us like ELO or the Bee Gees? It's okay. Trust Evelyn. She'll fulfill her part of the plan. Well, adventurers, are we ready? Are you? I've got condos for sale. Deluxe luxury condos. Mm. Well, oh, well, oh, well. Uh what about a nice game of golf? Not putt-putt, right? Yeah, uh, right. Putt-putt is so boring. Like, nobody likes mini golf. No. Real golf is where it takes hours to complete one stroke and absolutely nothing happens. Yeah, kind of like baseball. Uh, I mean, they just step up to the plate and, and run uh, you know, occasionally. Nothing really happens. Yeah, but baseball's actually fun. Okay, all right, all right. You're right, you're right. Okay, and, and we can't have that kind of tomfoolery around here. No siree. I'm coming down now, then edit, then the children. Just promise you'll go easy on the children. Just a few months of detention, nothing bad. Just no recess and a new, groovy fashion sense. How's this for a deal? I won't even take away their lunchtime of oatmeal, water, and bread. 
Evelyn lowers herself to the ground and looks around for the portal. When she spots the glistening blue, she turns back towards Layla Kane and begins to taunt her. What's shiny blue and going to consume you? What? You're supposed to be smart, right? Didn't you get a doctorate or something? Don't you watch Doctor Who and Star Trek? What's shiny blue and going to consume you? I'll have you know the only the most intelligent people can understand TV shows like Rick and Morty, Star Trek, or Doctor Who, and I am one of those people. Skinny, blue, I'm going to consume you. Oh, skinny blue jeans from the 70s. No. Water? Ding, ding, ding. You're wrong. The blue of someone's eyes as you stare deeply and intently into them, remembering everything that you've ever loved about them as they slowly walk down the aisle with your best friend. And, and then they turn to make one last sad eye contact with you before before leaving their life of happiness and determination behind to the confines and shackles of marriage? No! Whoa! You want to talk about that? <laughs> that was a lifetime ago. <laughs> Literally in another world. <laughs> but you're not okay, right? No! <laughs> Yikes! Um, well, let's talk about it. Edit, Kate, and Adam lower themselves to the comfort of solid ground to hear Layla's tale. And I've always taken out my stress on the kids. I, I think that was the day my do joy died. And to see other people with so much happiness and as they run around on the playground, tossing the ball, doing the monkey bars, wearing tag. It just, it reminds me of everything I lost. But it's not okay to take it out on others. You're destroying a whole forest. You made Remington boring. <laughs> I resent that. I'll have you know that buying a deluxe luxury condo is the greatest decision I've ever made. And now you're hurting others' lives, so you don't hurt as bad. You're right. But, but I finally felt like I had friends here, like I had a purpose. You have a purpose, Miss Kane. Your purpose is to help us grow up, to help us make the right choices and never make the same mistakes you did. Sometimes we don't know the difference between right and wrong, but you can help us. I'm so confused. That's okay. We can help you. But we can't do that if your magic is still here, destroying the jungle and hurting people. You're right. I'm going to have to get over it. It's not my fault, but it is my fault that I let myself get this way. I'm sorry, Kate, Adam. I'll make it up to you on the other side. And without hesitating a moment, Layla Kane steps towards the portal. Just before she touches it, she turns and looks back at the people surrounding her. I'll miss this place. Putting one foot in front of the other, she steps through and disappears. Instantly, the buildings begin to change around them. Slow changes but noticeable. A slight breeze, a vine dripping from a window. Even the adults under her charms feel suddenly immensely different. You know, I think I'll go play baseball instead. Me too. Or maybe mini golf. Anything besides actual golf. The biggest regret of my life was sitting through 40 hours of seminars and buying a deluxe luxury condo. Oh well, 
Congratulations, adventurers. You've beat the evil Layla Kane. I'm not sure she was all that evil. Just lost. Remington. Will everything go back to normal now, Remington? Yes and no. Uh, once things have changed, it's difficult to go back to normal. A lot of this forest has been destroyed. A lot of the animals are gone. And a lot of these people that live here changed forever. Condos. <sighs> oh, if we work hard, I know we can start to see some sort of semblance of life return to these woods. And what about us? Do we have to go home now? Is our adventure over? My dear. Your adventure has only just begun. And so, Kate Everett and Adam Adams joined Remington Giles, Evelyn Baker, and Edit Reed on many wonderful adventures. They grew up in the jungle, reaching adulthood physically, but stayed young at heart. They explored the caves of the known soldiers. They saw the yellow-bellied velocicrafters. They even came to find another gargantuous wriggler hidden deep within an underground blue hole. But nothing was quite as exciting as the bonds formed between the five. Their jokes, adventures, dangers, and treasures would be shared and passed down for eternity, even when the party would eventually separate. In fact, it all started one fateful day, 30 years after the glorious adventure I have just described to you. But by this time, they were all grown up and looked completely different from when they had as kids. Kate. Adam. I, I'm, I, I miss my family. I do too. Have you ever thought about going back? Sometimes, but it has been so long. What if no one remembers us? We, we, we have to believe they do. I mean, we have to hope. Adam? Kate? Okay. You're my best friend. The two approached the portal. Now since reclaimed by the jungle, everything looks so different since when they were kids. Yet the overwhelming wave of familiarity washed through them. They waved Remington, Evelyn, and Edit goodbye then grasped each other's hands, staring into the portal, which still shined and shimmered like the day Mrs. Kane stepped through. Thank you for the egregious times, my friends. Fly high. Extraordinarily extraordinaires. Are you ready? Only if you're with me. And as Kate spoke those words, she took a heavy sigh, Long had she waited to lead this place, but now it was finally happening. Could she come back? Would she come back? Three, two, one. The two stepped through the portal. The lights and colors became distorted and screams could be heard in the distance. A witch was seen floating through time and Kate thought she saw a girl standing over a wolf triumphantly. A sharp, cleansing light of blue flashed before each of their eyes before they both fell face first into the wooden mulch of the playground. They were home, and they were kids again. I don't believe it. What an adventure. Layla Kane blew the whistle for the kids to return inside from recess. Over the next few days, it would appear that nobody had noticed their disappearance. Not even Mrs. Kane remembered the adventure, though she was definitely more energetic and accepting towards the children. The time began to fly. Hours became days, and the days became weeks until one rainy day, a year later, Kate was at Adam's house. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll egg her car and she'll never see it coming. No, not that. Let's write the story. Story? You know, about the Poopletine River. Oh, right. But what will we call it? I don't know. 
How about Harry Potter and the... We can't call it Harry Potter. Why not? As much as you want to be Harry Potter, you're not. Fine. Lousy, stinking wizard. How about the poop? tale of the Poopletine River. No, no, no. Two on the dot. How about the mighty adventures of miraculous men and women? I actually kind of like that. The mighty adventures of miraculous men and women. Chapter one. The tyrannical tale of the Poopletine River.